G'day guys, welcome to Sumo's Projects and welcome to this video. Uh, this is a special video. I embarked upon a road trip recently over to Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, quite a journey and over there I had an opportunity to meet up with Matt Saar who is a uh, bespoke woodworker come furniture maker. Excellent quality products he makes and I was very fortunate that he gave me a tour of his shop. So I captured the footage and um, I'll present that to you now and I really hope you enjoy it because I had a great time and meeting Matt and uh, the whole experience was great. So Matt's uh, uh, active on Instagram but I'll put all these particular details into the links down below, uh, website and uh, Instagram page, all those sorts of things. So, so let's get the show on the road and if you haven't already I, uh, I would deeply appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and that will advise you to upcoming content that I do make. So, enjoy. Where to go, where to run. Yeah, the Queen's Air Force Bell probably over directing that direction. <laughs> Through a couple of sets of legs, the cluggage went to ground, Billings got the handball straight to Beams. Beams high ball inside. Ball. G'day. My name's Matt Sarr. I'm a full-time custom woodworker, bespoke furniture bake maker uh, based here in Adelaide, South Australia. Welcome to my workshop. I'll show you around. So this is a, a workbench I made. It's nothing fancy, just made from solid pine. Um, I've got this whiskey cart, this half-made whiskey cart that I'm building for a lady at the moment on top of it. I put a couple of drawers underneath it. Um, the drawers have got all my sandpaper and sanding supplies in there. And then the bottom one is where I keep um, those power tools and stuff that I use most often. So um, my plunge router's in there, my domino, uh, circular saw, track saw, a couple of things like that in there. Um, usual array of hand tools that I keep that I keep above, uh, chisels, hammers, that sort of stuff. Um, some of the shorter clamps that I work with. And then just in here I keep um, uh, this, I don't even know what you call this stuff. Um, but uh, this gear that I put down when I sand, it's really good for um, uh, you know just making sure I don't scratch up gear that I sand and, and other bits and pieces like that, bench dogs and stuff like that that I use on top of the bench. So this was a bit of a make my own design based on a couple of other things. So it's got, um, if I just move this around, you can see it's got uh, dog holes across the front and I've just got a couple of old vices um, so it doesn't have any sort of fancy tail vice but a couple of vices that I can then use uh, in conjunction with the dog holes to clamp stuff um, and then these slots here that I use both to sometimes drop tools in if I'm using them um, but especially to put clamps through, uh, just put basic clamps there and now I can clamp other stuff to the workbench so um, that, was, that was sort of where the, where the design came from for that. This is my table saw. It's a three horsepower leader cabinet saw. I've had this for, oh man, must be 15, almost 20 years. Uh, it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, really solid, cuts nice and straight. Um, put a zero clearance insert in there um, and obviously made the outfeed table, which in a small shop like this is a bit of an assembly table for me as well. Um, and, uh, and just uh, put a shelf under the table. So under there are things like my cross cut sled, and uh, a taper jig and a, a, you know, a bunch of those sort of table saw kind of jigs that are there. Um, I built this on the side, uh, which I really like. Um, uh, I've got a, another, um, uh, like a, a proper router table, um, but I just got really sick of having to, especially with, the, with little roundovers. So I built this just as a little roundover table. Um, it's just a really uh, cheap, little, um, a cheap little router that I found second hand and it's just got a quarter inch round over and it just sits on the, um, on the rails of the table saw so I can take it off when I need to move the fence out um, but otherwise it sits there and then I've got the full, it's obviously at the same height as the table saw then I've got the full, um, uh, the full space of the table saw just to be rounding over uh, bits for projects and stuff so um, I find that is just a really simple little, uh, a little you know, kind of bonus in terms of the way the table saw functions. Um, uh, my dust extractor is a two horsepower um, unit. 
I, I don't have in a small shop like this, I just don't have the space to have anything fixed and plumbed. Um, so this is on wheels and I can just move it around to any of the, uh, any of the main machines. Um, I've got them all plugged into, uh, into the, four inch, uh, the four inch port there. Um, so the table saw, planer thickness, the router table and the miter saw. Um, have all got and the band sort of all got attachments for that, so I can just wheel a wheel the dust extractor to wherever I want, which in a one man shop works okay for me. Uh, so on this side of the table saw, as you come into the workshop, I've got my planer thicknesser, um, the jet combo machine. Um, this is definitely one of the best things I've bought in a small shop. I used to have uh, a small thicknesser and a small planer, um, but I just uh, just couldn't afford the space in a, in a really small shop like this. So the combo machine works fantastic. And then I've also got my leader uh, bandsaw there. So I've got all of the planer thicknesser, the bandsaw and the table saw are all set up at the front of the shop um, so that I can feed timber out the front doors. So I work with the front doors open most of the time. Um, and that just gives me a little bit more space, enables me to have a bit of space at the back of the shop um, because I've got my, my in-feed or out-feed happening, uh, happening going out of the shop. Um, and then just on the other side of the planer thicknesser, um, a mobile timber rack um, and behind that sheet good storage. So um, like most workshops, uh, not as well organised as I'd like it to be um, and got more timber than uh, I probably know what to do with at the moment. Um, but when you see nice timber around, you've got to grab it, uh, you know, and, and you've got to store it somewhere. So along this side of the workshop, I've got my uh, miter saw and miter saw bench. Um, like most of the stuff that I've got here, uh, it was bought secondhand, bought at auction. Um, so I got this uh, this purpose built. Um, uh, miter saw table from uh, you know from some cabinet maker or something who was going out of business so it's eons old but it works just perfect um, old DeWalt miter saw there one of the first tools I bought must be about 20 years old but still going well and so what I've done is um, I've got this set up at the front of the bench uh, I've got a um, uh, miter track in the bench uh, with a, a tape in the bench so that I can cut to length that way um, but then set behind that line uh, little hobby bands, so that I use for small bits and pieces, um, and uh, a, a couple of sanders there, set behind there, so that long piece of timber will still go right along the bench. And then the um, uh, the drill press in the corner, uh, I've set the drill press up so that um, this uh, this little table that's got all of my um, uh, force bits and drill bits in it, again that's attached to the uh, to the drill press table. Um, but sits above the table here, so timber will just slide in and out. So long bits of timber I can feed into the workshop, and uh, to do that, that sort of first rough cut under the drill press and up to the uh, and up to the, the miter saw that way. A bit more, bit more sort of small timber storage up the walls from there. And then moving around this way from the workbench, I've got this little router table. Um, I think this is a timber con round table um, with a lift system in it. Um, I love this little unit, uh, it works really well. Um, I'm a bit of a bit keen on the magnets in the workshop, um, so I built this, uh, built this little board on the front and so all the uh, attachments, feather boards and whatever just magnetised onto, onto the front of that. Um, and you can see that I've taken the dust extraction and just routed it together around the side. As I said, so it's a, a 100 mil port there. Um, and I can literally just plug that mobile dust extractor into it. And behind there, um, like most shops set up at home, uh, there's some sort of non-woodworking stuff in those shelves at the back there, as well as some uh, you know, scraps and small bits and pieces for small projects, but there's the usual collection of household paints and uh, leftover tiles from the bathroom and a bunch of stuff like that that um, unfortunately sits in the workshop at the same time too. And then this is the last corner of the workshop. Uh, there's another assembly table at the back uh, there. I do still do quite a bit of picture framing and so that uh, table at the back there is set up there for me to cut all my glass on. Um, and then in front of that, I bought this uh, King Chrome mobile trolley, mostly made for mechanics and such like that. But I find in a small shop, it's really good. So all of my 
um, you know, uh, pliers and drill bits, files and hammers, sockets and spanners, small clamps, bunch of those sort of small tools are in here, um, where it sort of sits, but it's mobile, so when I want to use that, uh, that space, I can just wheel those all out into another part of the shop. And then this sort of main open area that I'm standing in here is essentially my only sort of assembly space other than the, the table saw table. So if I'm building, you know, larger bits of furniture, tables and that sort of stuff, um, this is the space that that, that, that tends to be in. Um, and then the cabinet over here, um, I built these, I call them holsters, um, these holsters from the, my drill and driver. Uh, just so that I can always grab those. The workbench is right there. They're always uh, they're always easily accessible. And then uh, inside the cabinet, I've just got some of the other power tools that I don't use as much. My electric plane and other sorts of bits and pieces like that. Um, uh, PPE and you know a, a bunch of that other sort of stuff that you don't need and that you just want away. But um, pretty much that's my workshop. So thanks for coming. I hope it's interesting. And uh, thanks, Simo, for coming to visit us here in Adelaide. It's good to see you, mate.